Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in our beautiful studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Dr. Dan Diker. He's the president of the Jerusalem Center for Foreign Affairs. Dan, thank you for being on the show. Josh, thank you. Tell our viewers a little about what is the Jerusalem Center for Foreign Affairs? Jerusalem Center for Foreign Affairs, just, just renamed formally for many decades the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, is the only real foreign affairs center in Israel that strengthens Israel's security and enhances its safety by elevating its international status. We're seeing a lot of pressure from the Biden administration to hold off, to go to a ceasefire, to not fight back. Why, why is that in the best interest of the United States of America? That's a very good question. And then there's the way Israel uh, and the Middle East see the Middle East. And there is the way the Biden administration um, sees itself right now in an election year, especially uh, one in which president has announced that he is not um, going to run for election again, and that for the, I think the first time in, in it may be ever that they delivered, or, or perhaps a Lyndon Johnson was the other uh, case, but they delivered a vice presidential candidate without any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of voting, any kind of primaries, any kind of, uh, um, you know, formal con consideration. And the United States, therefore, wants quiet. They want industrial quiet in Gaza. They want quiet in the north as Hezbollah has been attacking Israel at Iran's behest every single day since the 8th of October in the north, the 7th of October in the south. The United States has, in this administration, has a profound interest in a ceasefire, in a minor, perhaps, deal return of some hostages. It's not all the hostages, but they want quiet at all at, at any price, and unfortunately, the price is very heavy for Israel. We see this as an American issue. We saw it at the RNC. Uh, we saw it at the DNC. Uh, Israelis speaking about what's happening here. This is obviously something that's important to America. Why? The moms and dads of hostages appeared both at the Republican National uh, Convention in Milwaukee and Democratic National Convention in Chicago. It is an extraordinary development because it's strictly an American, it's an American political event. But here we are in the, have been in the midst of an international terrorist tragedy, a humanitarian catastrophe of a hundred American men and women who were both murdered and uh, injured, wounded and kidnapped into the, into the clutches of the ISIS, Al Qaeda, Hamas, um, you know, claws and are, are currently Americans, many of them, at least eight Americans are currently in the hell of the, of the Hamas dungeons uh, deep under, the, uh, under Gaza. And so this is an American issue. It's not just an Israeli issue. And I think that uh, the uh, American officials, both in the DNC and the Republican, uh, the Republican National Convention were wise enough to, to bring the hostages because they, they understand that it's an American issue and insofar as they support Israel. But I think that what you and I have talked about, that this is an American issue and it should be, America should be leading an international campaign. 23 countries have uh, citizens deep under the ground in the Gaza dungeons. You know, we also talk about this uh, quite a bit for the last two decades, maybe, that this isn't a war about territory or land for peace. It's a religious war. It's very clear. The, the war, the Muslims call this war the Al-Aska flood, the Temple Mount flood. Yet we call this war Operation Iron Sword. Why, why is the West missing this point that this is a religious war? For many, many years, uh, and I must admit that Israel bought into a misconception in their desperation for peace, they fashioned what is, what is and has been a religious ideological war of Islam uh, challenging the Judeo-Christian community worldwide and specifically their desire, their commitment to destroy the one and only nation state of the Jewish people on their road to killing what Osama bin Laden called around 9-11, the Crusader Zionist Alliance. Christians are the Crusaders in their mind, and the Jews, of course, are interchanged with the Zionists. And this is their commitment. And we in Israel made a mistake in, in, uh, in modeling this war as what they call the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. It is not 
the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. That is a territorial war, as you mentioned, many people think, and it is a political problem, as many people misunderstand. But in fact, the 7th of October proved to everyone that this is a jihad. It is an Islamic religious war against Jews and Christians and our history and our common future. Dan, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Josh, the critical issue right now is for our Christian brothers and sisters and our Jewish brothers and sisters, Zionists all, to come together as we've never come together before because our Judeo-Christian history, uh, our, our, our current state of affairs and our future hang in the balance. And the, our, our Christian family in the United States, the evangelical community particularly, at least 60 to 70 million strong, they can change the balance of what is happening now and make sure that every American, certainly the American administration, stands um, shoulder to shoulder with Israel unconditionally, pressuring the Hamas and the Islamist terrorists led by the, the, the villainous uh, Iranian regime and their mullahs. Uh, and we know what their intentions are, and standing together, we can all defeat this evil among us. Thank you, Dan, for being on the show, and thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio.